Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love and your care for us. We want to exalt you tonight. We are so thankful for the position that you placed us in, just the ability to study your word in the comfort of our home, to be able to, to, to collaborate together as we study deep truths, Father God. Father, tonight, as we study this prayer of confession, we first want to confess our sins. You, you know our heart and that we sin each day. And uh, we, we sin so much, Father God, and, and many of the sins that we don't even know about. Um, we're we're, we're uh, sorry for what we've done, and we, we know that we can only come into your presence through the blood of Jesus, Father God. But we want to grow. We know that this is a, a spiritual life. We're growing closer and closer to the image of Jesus every day. And so we're striving to be, to be uh, more holy, to be more set apart from the world and set apart to you, Father God. So just as we study this prayer of confession, may we implement these, these prayers. May we imp implement the truths that are contained in these prayers, Father God. And that may this study not just be a study for, for knowledge, but may there also be a, a heart change and also um, putting that heart change into action, especially with these pr prayers as far as us speaking. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. So here we're continuing our last study in the prayers. Uh, there are many more prayers in Scripture. I wish we could continue this, but alas, we'll, we'll just do this at some, sometime in the future. There's intercessory prayers. There's uh, corporate prayers of confession. Uh, there's worship prayers. And so what we really did was, this study has been going on for two months, so we do need to bring it to a close, and then we can always revisit it in the course later. Um, the prayers that we studied have been, just for review for, for, for Mac, is the Lord's Prayer, uh, the Prayer for Boldness in Acts 4, uh, Hannah's Prayer of Thanksgiving in 1 Samuel chapter 2, and now we're moving on to the last prayer in our series on prayer, uh, Psalm 51, a prayer of confession. And so I just want to quickly give you a brief overview for our study tonight. Just a brief overview. What we have here is, uh, uh, what we'll do is we'll read Psalm 51. I'll read Psalm 51 to us. And then after I read it, we will discuss the background context of 2 Samuel 11 and 12. So the Psalm 51 has a background context, a story behind the Psalm. And so some Psalms, we don't know the background. And so we just have the Psalm as it is. But in Psalm 51, there is a clear background context. So we're going to really unpack and just maybe read through Psalm, uh, read through Samuel, especially chapter 12, to really see a context. And then the third is we're going to start studying Psalm 51, 1 to 3. Okay. And then, uh, we'll, Lord willing, we'll at least finish Psalm 51, 1 to 3. And then the assignment for next week. So I'm getting high tech here. I'm, 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 I'm slowly adjusting to uh, this, these weekly meetings. The assignment for next week, this week was uh, 51, 1 to 5. Three observations and three questions from Psalm 51, 6 to 10. That will be the assignment for next week. <clears throat> and then I will assign... Uh, for those who want, so this is, everything is optional, okay, because right now everyone's auditing, so I will, if you want to, to, to practice a verse, breaking down a verse, uh, and then we can, we can use your, we can use you as a guinea pig the next week, so if you want to do that, I can assign you a verse for next week, but there's no pressure. Uh, I, I would like, I would like us all to try to be practicing the three observations and three questions, because that's helping us to really, uh, grow in our ability to to see in the words of john piper to see what we see <laughs> to understand what we see so anyway without further ado let's go ahead and get into the word so turning now to everyone can see this passage so here is the the passage psalm 51 to the choir master a psalm of david when nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone into bathsheba have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my, my transgressions 
and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done e what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltlessness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or else I would give it. You will not be pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Wow. Very powerful passage. Very powerful passage. So let's, let's come back to the beginning here. Let's come back to the beginning here. Let's, let's just ask questions or let's just make any ops let's let's make some initial observations from the passage and then we'll we'll go into the parallel context because i think if we ask questions here and then we look at the parallel passage that will be helpful to us uh, and looking at the background so let's just right off the bat let's look at some observations let's make some observations here will the observation include questions already yeah so we can we can make observations or questions okay so, uh, may I be the first class? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, that's good. Uh, do we have a time frame uh, from the time David uh, went to Bathsheba and the time this uh, Psalms was uh, written or made by him? Yeah, so, there, so there's debate, there's debate. Uh, so that's a good question, so let's, let's write that down. So maybe we'll research that, but there is debate. There is different views on when, on, on, on the timeline of when the, the psalm was written from, from his sin until when the psalm was written. Although, anyway, I won't say anything else. It's a question, so it's a new question. <laughs> okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, is this really the specific prayer of David when he committed sin toward, uh, towards Bathsheba, or towards God with Bathsheba? So you're asking, are these the exact words? Is that, is that your yes, question? Yes, yeah. So this, that's good. That's good. So, um, and then, and so that's one question. And the second question is a background question. Very good question because that, because people have different views on that, Mac. And also, if these are David's words, they really speak to his heart. They're very strong. They're very, they're very uh, humbling. So that's a great question. Any other questions or observations? Just initial observations from, from this, from this reading. I'll, I'll make an observation. As I was reading, I was just noticing how many requests there were. There was multiple upon multiple uh, requests to God for cleansing, for removing the sin, for cleaning. So there's a lot of requests. There's a lot of requests for, uh, there's a lot of entreaties to the Lord. Let me just make that observation. And I, and I guess for me, looking at that, it seems to be that David is really self-aware of his sin. It seems to be like the case. Because some people, sin isn't a big deal. But, I mean, there's so many requests to, for, for, for this to be clean. So self-aware of, of sin. Anyone else? What, what other observations did you make from this, from this prayer here? I, I, there's a question that I had. I'm not going to... Uh, 
I'll wait to see if you get it. There's one question that really came out to me that I, I really, I was doing a little bit of study today and I really thought about it and uh, I don't know if I have an answer yet, but I'll, I'll give you the question. This question here, against you and you only have I sinned. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, what do you mean? You sinned against Bathsheba. You sinned against, against her, her husband, Uriah. You, you sinned against Bathsheba's family by shaving her. So, so why would David say that? It's a question. I, I'm just, you see the, the difficulty? It seems that he's, he's sinned against multiple people, but he's saying, I've only sinned against God. So that's something that maybe we want to think about. Maybe we want to study. It's a legitimate question. I was doing some research on it, but I haven't really. It's, it's interesting. I don't know. If maybe that's something you've thought about. Let me write that down. I have already an idea on that, on that aspect, team. Okay, can you save it? Let's, when we get to that verse, save okay. it when you, when you get to that verse. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if, you want, if you're taking notes, please. Yeah, for the questions, absolutely, boy, say, say that. Let's, let's discuss that. So let's at least write it down here. Um, good. Okay, any other questions or, or, or observations? Uh, Tim, okay. can you okay. go back to that verse when, he, when David was talking about her mother? Okay, here we go. Let's go her down. Own, here. About her own. I think I have. I was see, brought right. That five, number five, uh, verse five. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Did he, did he really mean that? That uh, every time uh, a boy or a, uh, a man is born and conceived by the mother or by the parents, there is iniquity or there was something really in, in the manner by, uh, in which he was conceived? No, that is a great question, Boboy. Oh. What, is, what does it mean to, in, in sin, my mother conceived me? What does yeah. that mean? That, what does that excellent, mean? Yeah. Excellent question. <laughs> excellent question, Bobo. Excellent question. Let's, let's write that down. Verse five. Excellent question. Verse number, no, verse number, uh, number four. Uh, it, seems, Tim, it seems in verse five, David is justifying himself to be a sinful man. Maybe in the creation, the procreation, there was already evil in man. Yeah. Therefore, it is inevitable that man will sin. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. justifying that he is a sinner. Yeah, so, so that's one possibility for sure. That's one, that's one, that's one uh, possibility mm -hmm. for sure. So let's, let's think about that. Henry, Henry has given us... Um, a, a very good answer. But let's think about what that means. Perhaps it's, it's exactly what Henry's saying. So when we get to verse five, this is verse five. Let's explore that. Please, please let's let's uh, interact with that, Henry, when we get to verse five. But, but, okay. but that is definitely possible. Anyone else? Any other observations or questions? Why why hisop? Hisop hisop. What is hisop? Right. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what is this up? What verse is that, Danny? Seven, sorry, it's a bit uh, okay. a bit down. Seven. Why well, use this up and clean, cleansing or washing? Great question. Now, again, we're just going to take a step back as we're doing this. Uh, I've shared this before in our classes. Mac is somewhat new here, Mac. So, part of the purpose, with Mac, for asking these questions is number one, to kind of get ourselves oriented in what type of research we want to do to discover an answer. But also what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we're trying to really uh, discover, I shouldn't say discover, but I mean, we're trying to discover the truth. But, but, but another component is that we're moving, we're moving from, the, from the text into the application. So in, in a sermon, preaching, teaching, and so these questions, it, sometimes we know the answer, but we're asking questions both to discover what's in the text, but also they might be questions that people will have in the audience. You might know the answer, I might know the answer, but there's Cigarado, someone that doesn't know. And so the purpose for asking these questions are, we need to highlight different 
things that maybe it's a question or an issue in the audience be, because we're 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 uh, we're trying to exposit the text for the audience. So it's what I'm trying to get is the questions are more than just for our sake, our, our benefit as well. Okay, uh, Danny, you were going to say something. No, it's okay. It's okay. That's okay. Good. So. Uh, I have, I really, uh, observations are cool on. A any other observations or, um, an observation can be a command, it can be a declaration, it can be, it can be uh, uh, relationships, it could be requests, uh, you know, things like that, of that nature. Any other, how about, let's, let's, this is really long. Let's, let's narrow this down to verses, just verse one to five. And we won't go on much longer. It's already eight o'clock, so we'll go on for maybe three or four more minutes. Any other uh, observations or questions? Because I think that was really the assignment. Verses one to five. My observation, Tim, is on the first verse. Okay, go ahead. He started by asking mercy. Great, great observation. So, yeah. so let's write this down here. Because uh, nowadays, if you your sin, if you accept your sin you probably would start immediately the sin that you committed just like in he mentioned i only my translation my iniquity you should have started with iniquity but then he started with have mercy no <laughs> that's a great observation almost as if he's in this terrible situation he's at the mercy of the judge and he's not even he's just asking for mercy Diva. great uh uh, great observation. That's a great observation. It really, it really denotes this this state of humility. Great observation. And actually, he mentions it again in verse one: "Have mercy upon me, according to your abundant mercy." Right. <laughs> so, okay. So, notice here. That's an observation. In verse one, mercy is is a repetitive word. Okay. So that's an observation. All right. So let's let's make let's make another observation here. That's that. This is an example of a great observation. Okay, the author is uh, David is highlighting this. He's asking. He's focusing on asking for mercy, and so that's something that it both begins and then it's repeated just one 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 clause later. So, uh, great observation. I, I'll I'll make an observation here. Maybe this is like maybe a question or an observation. But in verse three, in verse three here, I know my transgressions. I know my transgressions. Really, uh, I guess that's really coming back to here. Uh, David is really self-aware of his sin. This would be verse, is this verse two? Verse three, okay. Uh, I'll, anyone else have, a, have an observation or a question that we'll, we'll we, I, I don't want to, we've already expend, expended, spent our time. <laughs> anyone else? I'll leave it for 10 seconds. Anyone else? Could you raise that up so I can, so we can read the other verses? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you want to look at verses yeah. three, five? Yeah. The last time, four and five, I think four and five. Yeah, let's do that. Here. I'll bring an observation here. Verse four. Verse four is the yeah. context of a judgment. It's it's it's, it's a courtroom, Diba. It's a courtroom, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. So there's a courtroom setting in this prayer. That that will be significant later. So let's just make the observation here. Yeah, it has something to do with the way because of his stature as a king, he knows uh, somebody has to make a judgment. So it's king as who? Oh boy, the, the God, king God. is functioning as who's? Yeah, he, David as king, he know. Yeah. He, he makes judgment. That's why he, somebody also higher than him will make a judgment on him. Yeah, so there's someone above him making a judgment. So, so there, there's really this idea of there, there's, a, there's a judge, a law, and then some type of judgment. In the text, literally judgment, Diva. Yeah, something like that. I don't want to hold it. Anyone else want to make a comment? Last, last chance, last, last chance. Okay. I think this is great. This is a great start for just getting us oriented to the text. Now, now just when, when, so when I am preparing a sermon or I'm studying a passage of scripture, I will do this. I'll often sit down and I'll just highlight different things. 
I'll highlight key words that I want to study to, 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 to explore further. So let me just go back here and just quickly, I'll erase this later. But if, if, if I, I want to study, I'm thinking about studying, I would want to study that word. We talked about looking at this. Um, I'd want to look at what this, what this word means. I'd want to look at um, this to me is, is a huge question that I want to think about. That was a question we brought up. Um, and then also this, of course. So we have a lot to, 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 to study. So the next step is let's go to the background context. Now, we know for sure the background context because we have here, this here is, what we have here is, this is the title of the song. And then we have a context. So, so this, is a, this is a title. This is the, uh, this is the object to whom this psalm is written to. This would be a, a person. So this is the, the, the recipient of the psalm. Of course, this is the, uh, the person who, who wrote it. Uh, aim. Henry, you want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, since this is a prayer of David, and he want okay to memorize to memorize a prayer or even to memorize a long verse or a long anything uh, to memorize singing is a good singing that prayer or singing anything it is a good uh, I know what you it's a good memory okay yeah. we can memorize the words while uh, we can memorize much better if we do it in singing. Yeah, that's true. No, and that's a great observation. And, and there's really massive overlap. There's massive overlap between prayer and, and, and singing because you have the same object and you're trying to, great, great observation, uh, Kuya Henry, great observation. Um, let's just quickly highlight, so this is the context. So the context here is, is uh, So someone was asking about the timeline, okay? Right, so we have, we have two time qualifiers here. Time one, time one, time two, right? Very clear, the context, okay? So what I, what I would say, we actually can answer several of the questions that, that were, were asked immediately. Um, uh, uh, so Max's question was, are these the words of, of David okay and so there's massive debate if David actually wrote this and um, maybe later I'll give you some of those 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 reasons why people doubt it I mean this would be this would be liberals that don't take a high view of scripture but I mean looking at looking at this and then looking at these two we would have to say these are David's words and they're right at they're so to answer Bull Boy's questions, they're at the time David sung this and prayed this at the time when Nathan confronted him after he had committed sin with adult with with Bathsheba. Okay, so so that's that would be the time frame. So right off the bat, as we 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 ask the question and then the text has answered at least several questions for us. Now, fair enough. There's there's debate. Behind the text, there's debate. People say, well, no, 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 it can't be David's actual words. He had some type of source prayer, and then it's been expanded upon. Fine, okay, but if we're taking a high view of Scripture, the text is telling us these things, okay? So, so let's go first. Any questions before we go to, to 2 Samuel chapter 12? Any questions? Tim. Oh, boy. Yeah, my, my question on the timeline is actually on... It's either on the number of days or maybe a number of hours after, okay. 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 after Nathan, after Nathan, because okay. it could be days after. Maybe David was still thinking, what did I say to Nathan? Was, was it really? I don't know. That's why. 
Yeah. That's why I want to know the timeline. Was it Understood. days yeah. after or only hours after? Biggie, see, no, that's good. So let's let's look at the, let's look at the prayer. Let's look at I mean, let's look at the confrontation. Let's look at the confrontation, and then maybe we can make an assessment on that bull boy. And um, uh, uh, maybe there are some clues. So so great great question. Let's go ahead. Let's go now to Samuel chapter twelve. So we're not able to read Samuel eleven. We don't have the time to read Samuel eleven, which describes the sin. Okay. But we can at least say in, 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 in the sin of David, there was lust, there was, and we'll review this when we go back. There was, in, in, in uh, Samuel 11, there was lust, there was adultery, there was deception, there was lying, and there was murder and a cover-up. Okay, so there is really, there is a lot of sin Although we typically say David committed sin with Bathsheba. It's like one sin. No, there's like many sins, okay? So we can, we can highlight them. And, and this would be an example of whenever there's someone caught in a serious sin, rarely, if ever, is there one sin. Many times there's many sins connected with that one big sin. So we don't have time to read Samuel 11. When we go back to, to Psalm 51, we'll, we'll list some of those sins. We can discuss some of those sins. Let, let's focus on Nathan's rebuke. Now, would someone like to read this, or is it just easier for me to read because I have the screen? Is it just easier for me to read? Okay, I'll just read. It's, it's just easier because I can, I can scroll, but let's go ahead. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other was poor. The rich man had many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. And he brought it up, and it grew up with him with his children. It used to eat from his, from his morsel and drink from his cup and lie in his arms. So this is not only, he only has one lamb, but it's a personal lamb. It's in the house. It's like my dog, <laughs> Bon Bon. Bon Bon is, Bon Bon sometimes eats from my table. <laughs> Uh, but it's imagine like for us, Bon Bon is very special to us, very dear to us as a, as a, as a, as a dog. And he, and he brought it up and grew with him, with his children. It used to eat of his morsel and drink from its cup and lie in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. So anyone who says that it's just a 21st century phenomenon of this, this dog, it's very close to man. We have an example here of a lamb that was very close. And it's not a strange story. Mankind has been very close to animals for a long time. It's not just a, a 21st century phenomenon. Now there was a traveler, there, there came a traveler to the rich man and he was unwilling to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the guests who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Wow. So what can we say? What are some things? Let's make some observations here. What, what are some things that we can make? I, I'm not looking specifically right now at verbs or objects. You, you can make an observation there. But what I'm thinking about is, what about the story? What about David's response? What are some observations we can make that are very significant here that speak to David's uh, uh, heart, head condition? What, what, what can we say? What are some things? First, is the, he, he saw the injustice. Mm. done by the rich man uh, taking advantage of the poor man's <laughs> good we, um, yeah uh, to, so, to a certain degree the, it shows how greedy sometimes people are they, mm. they want to entertain people but they don't want to spend on their own they want to spend other people's uh, thing uh, to David as a king, it is, it is something that is not honorable for a man to do. 
Yes. So he saw some injustice in that in that scenario. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is he did not think that this kind of scenario will be connected to what he did, because no, what okay. he did yeah, was yeah, yeah. different. Okay. So let's let's so so David <laughs> so David saw the injustice. This yeah. is a major point. Okay. And the implication is David David. So what we can say is David could see the injustice of another. Okay, of another. All right, so David, he can see the sin of another man. Viva. David could see someone else's sin clearly, and he was right. It was it was it was a clear sin. Okay, but then. Um, what, what, uh, what, what, boy, boy, what did you, what did you say? What did you say next? Uh, I said, uh, David was not aware that the situation also involved himself. He was also in a similar situation. That is one thing he did not foresaw in that story. So then what we want to say here then is David could not see his own sin. Yeah, something like that. Uh, David is a hypocrite. <laughs> no, sometimes that is the situation when uh, what you did, especially if you're the king or the president or the governor or whatever, that sometimes you are entitled to some things that ordinary people are not entitled to. Sometimes you don't consider that a sin. You just consider it as a privilege. You, you, and, you, this is, and this is the this is the problem, uh, even to the present uh, situation. Some people in high position consider that as a privilege. So when they do that, they don't consider that a sin. They consider that as a privilege. Could, could you say privilege or almost like this? Well, boy, he's yeah. above the law. Something like yeah, yeah. It's a privilege to be above the law. Yeah. The the laws don't apply to him. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the essence, especially during those times that when you're the king, you are yeah. at the same time the law. Yeah. Yeah. And when we see this in the U.S., it's all, it's, yeah. right now there's a story where the Michigan governor, the state of Michigan, she had the strictest lockdown. She was telling, this weekend is a very big holiday for, for Americans. And uh, she said, no one's going on vacation, stay home. And then her husband, she's like, don't go to the, don't go to the lake. Don't get on your boat. Stay home. Do not go on vacation. Her husband's trying to put his boat in the water. <laughs> it's, it's across. Like, this is the rule. This is the, the mandate. But it doesn't apply to my family like that. Yeah, so something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, great. Okay, so what we, what we can say, though, then, is that the implication here we could say is David is a hypocrite and he is deceived. He is deceived. Can we say that he is uh, deceived? Or uh, not aware of his sin. Very, very powerful. What is the New Testament passage that talks about, it's a foundational passage that talks about, from Jesus' teaching, that talks about this idea of not being able to see your own sin. Does any passage come to mind? Does any passage come to mind? The, that story about you can see the plank in others' eyes, but you cannot see, other, you can see the, the moot in others' eyes, but you cannot see the plank in your own eyes. Hey, yeah. It's in Matthew. Yeah, it's in Matthew. Yeah, it's in Matthew. Yeah, it's speck. It yeah. talks about the speck. Oh, yeah, the speck, about the speck. You can see the speck in yeah. another's eye, but you cannot see the plank in your own eye. Great, great teamwork. <laughs> Kuya Henry, what, what, did you have the passage? Were you going to give the passage, Kuya Henry? You were going to say something? He's looking. He's looking. I'll help us. I'll help us. It's uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses... Um, 7, verse 5. Yeah, you know, verses, verses, we'll just put verses one to five. Uh, Matthew okay. chapter seven, verses one to five. 
And so we, this, this is also dealing with, from our study, we're coming full circle, Viva. We had a study on the hypocrites, right, in the Lord's Prayer. And so this is talking about um, uh, hypocrisy. Okay. Good. Uh, so we're, we're making connections, and this is really helpful. This is really helpful to us, especially with people caught in sins. Let's continue now. Let's move on here and let's read. Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms. And I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this were too little, I would add to you so much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord? What is this word of the Lord? What is it that, that David has despised? Again, Siraya, it's about the thou shalt not kill. Okay, so and what, what is the thou shalt not kill a part of, boy? What is that part of? Ten commandments. Okay, ten commandments bigger. What's that part of? God's commandment, the Ten Commandments. That's all part of the Ten Commandments. Yes, the, the law, the law, the, yeah, law. the law. Yeah, God's law. So, or the Mosaic, part of the Mosaic law. Yeah, so remember, so this here is actually a, a perfect example where the law is equated with the Word of God. The two are synonymous, okay, in this context, all right? So, so people can say, I love God. This is why Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but don't keep my commandments? <laughs> so so uh, uh, the question for me is, what does this word despise mean? Does anyone know what this word, this is an action here. What does this word despise? To say I despise, what is that? What does this word despise mean? Does anyone know the word despise? Uh, Danny, what was that? Dislike. Okay, dislike or, yeah, dislike, it could be dislike. To some degree, it's like you take it for granted. Uh, yes, granted. Or it, it could also mean disrespect or to look down on something. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Disregard. Uh, yeah. Disrespect, think, disregard. Okay. Think little. Think yeah. little. It's a little thing. It, it, it's a little thing. It, you, you, it, 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 it's not serious to you. It, it's, I think you as, said regard, yeah. Yeah, as you call it in, the, in America, no big deal. Yes, yes. Yes. Now, I, I'm drawing attention to this because when we come back to Psalm 51, when we come back to Psalm 51, um, I think he talks about this thinking little. I think he talks about this thinking little. Okay, so uh, I'm just I'm, I'm wetting I'm wetting the appetite. I'm 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 setting the table right now. Okay, let's continue on here. Uh, uh, Dean, evil in Dean. Yeah, uh, Henry, go ahead. Okay, uh, to my observation, that verse ten, uh, because you have despised me. Yes. Uh, it's it's. That word despise me for my uh, from my observation. I think the word from verse seven on verse seven, eh, the God has anointed him over Israel, delivered you. This are this comes from the word of God. Eh, has put you in the master's house. You have you have your wives. Everything everything has been given. You lack nothing. Say so you lack nothing. Now you want. To have some, you have more. Uh, uh, you want to have some more, rather than those I have given you. Yeah. Yes. No. Great. Great observation. No. So what you're saying is he was not content with what God had given. He wanted something else. Y yes. Things like that. No? Really good. Because is that not what Adam and Eve also did? <laughs> you can have all of this. Don't touch the tree that knowledge is going to be, oh, I want that. <laughs> Same. It's, it's stated at the end of verse 8. 
look at the end of verse 8. And if this were too little, I would, uh, I would add, uh, what's that? Where's that? Yeah, uh, verse 8. Your master's yeah, house, yeah. your master's and, wives. Yeah, and the last part, last sentence of verse 8. And if this were too little, I would add to you as much more. Something like that. So what Henry is talking about what the, what that's what Henry is talking about. Yeah. But but are this, but, are this not enough? Are it's this not, not enough. enough? Yeah, it's not enough. Yeah. And then he he. It, yeah. In David's mind, it was not enough. Diva, it was yeah. not, it was not enough. Yeah. No, this is really good. And it's almost like it's where this despise comes in. It's not a big deal. He focuses on something else. I I think. Yeah. Uh, that that is is telling. David, I am here. I have given you this. I have given. You should have asked me for Bathsheba. <laughs> you should have asked me for Bathsheba. <laughs> no, no, no. Joking, joking. <laughs> but no, what you're saying is that he's given so much, and yet it's not enough. I think, and I think that's a phenomenal observation that David is not content. That he's not content. Because you have despised, uh, now, now therefore the sword shall not depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of the Hittite, Uriah the Hittite, to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, be, behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house and will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. He shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun, for you did, for you did it secretly I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Genuine confession here. Genuine confession here. How do we know this is genuine? What are, what are some things, how could we know if it wasn't genuine is a question. What are some things genuine. in other situations that would tell us that it would not be genuine? What are some things? Uh, genuine in verse yeah. 13, he said, I have yeah. sinned against the Lord. That's it. Yeah. He did not make some alibi. He immediately yeah. Yeah. Asked, I have sinned against the Lord. Yes. Uh, no. As king, as king, as I, as I mentioned earlier, as king, he, he could have justified it in another way of saying that I am entitled to it. That's a, not a big deal. I am the king. But he immediately said, I have sinned. Yes, yes. Notice that it's not like Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. It's not like it's not like Saul. Remember Saul? It's not like Aaron. The people gave it to me. I had to do it. <laughs> I have sinned. Period. Period. No excuse. No blaming. Look at he's sitting. He's sitting over there. Why are you not judging it? There's there's no there's no pointing fingers. I have sinned. Period. And he acknowledged he sinned the Lord. He, he did not say, I have sinned against Bathsheba or I have sinned against Uriah. But instead he said, I have sinned against the Lord. So this is the, this is the actor. The actor. That's the action. And then this is the, uh, we could say this is the object or um, yeah, the object. In essence, it's the yeah. object. As a king, he should have. As a king, he has the power to kill Nathan. Yeah, he could. Have. <laughs> right? and he could, huh? He has the power. Yeah. The that will happen in the future. The, the future kings, yeah. when they come and they say you're breaking the law, they cut them asunder, Diba. That will happen. That will help. In, that will happen in Israel's in Israel's future. Um, there's so many places we can go here. We don't have a lot of time. Um, uh, I'm thinking about even like this thing, uh, you did it secretly. I will do this before all Israel in, in, uh, in Jesus teaching what's whispered in the corners will be proclaimed from the mountain, from the, from the rooftops. Okay. There's many parallels throughout scripture that when you do something secretly, God will expose it publicly. Okay. So we don't have time to go there. But I, I think this is very helpful. One other thing I want to make an identification is the Lord forgives David's sin. Okay? What if David had not been repentant? What do you think would have happened? I think God would have taken his life. The, 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 penalty, the penalty was death. And God was merciful. 
okay? Yet, is there consequences for David's actions? Yes, and the consequences are so great. They're so great. Um, any other comments? Let's, I think we have a context now. We have a context. We have a context of what has happened here. Okay, good. Let's go back now. Let's go back now to our, to our passage. Okay, it's within this context. Now, we have, <laughs> have mercy on me, oh God. So, so think about this, though. Think about this. Okay, in that passage, one statement, I have sinned against God. Okay, and we identify no excuses. Okay, now we have a detailed prayer of confession here. Let's see if there's any excuses. Let's see if there's a, there, there's a wheeling and dealing. Let's see if there's a negotiation here. Let's see if there's finger pointing. Okay, what I'm trying to get at is David's sin and this prayer is a perfect example of what a true repentant uh, heart, both a repentant heart, a heart that then confesses, a heart that then produces fruit of repentance looks like, okay? So this is a prayer of confession. Um, now, Dibat, we looked in, 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 in Matthew 6, 5 to 13, the Lord's Prayer, we, we pray regular sin. We, we, we pray regular, uh, we confess that. This seems to be a heightened sin where someone has really been engaged in deceit, deception, uh, a sinful behavior, and now he has come to understanding. Okay, so let's, let's work through here. And as we work through here, I want us to really look at this heart, this contrite, this this penitent heart. Because as pastors, as leaders, this is the exemplar of what repentance looks like. So when you're dealing with sin in the camp, when you're dealing with sin in your church, this is what a true repentant heart looks like. The other example we could go to for repentance is Luke 15 with the prodigal son. But for now, let's focus upon here. Um, because this, is, this will be helpful for how we pray, but also for how, when we deal with sin, when, when we catch someone or someone is caught in the sin, this is a perfect example for how to deal with them. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and race here. Let's, uh, I'll, do, I'll do verse one. So, Mac, this is your first time. What we're doing is we're, we're going to identify every word, okay? And then we're looking to go deeper if necessary, but we're looking at relationships. We're looking at relationships here. And we're drawing out significance so that we can explain the text and we can apply the text. Okay, so that's what we're doing. All right, so I'll just do verse, verse 1. Whenever we're going through the process, Mac, if I'm looking, I always want to first identify verbs. Verbs are the most important uh, sentence com uh, component of a sentence. Okay, I'm looking at verbs first. Then I'm looking for the actor of the verb. And then I'm looking for the object. So who, actor is who does the action. Object, who is receiving the action, okay? And then you have, you have adverbial words and clauses that, that qualify the action, and then you have adjectival words that qualify or describe nouns, and then you have connecting words that make a relationship between clauses, and, and that's essentially it. But let's go ahead and look here now. So what I see here in verse one, uh, I, see, I see this semicolon, and I see this capital letter. So I know at least, I, can, I know at least from here to here, there's at least one, some form of sentence, okay, based upon punctuation, capitalization, okay. I'm going to identify verbs. I only see one verb. The verb is have mercy on me, okay. Now, uh, Mac, I'll give you a, a handout later. We don't have time to go to the handout tonight. But in the handout, there's different types of verbs. A verb can be a uh, an action, it could be a promise, it could be a command, it could be a request, it could be a warning. So there's a whole list of, of types of, verb, of verbs. It could be a declaration, it could be a state of being. So here, what we know is this is an, this is a, an imperative, an, an, an imperative uh, verb. Uh, but it's not a command because it's being addressed to God and David is in a place of 
uh, inferiority to God. So this would be a, an in, in, entreaty, an entreaty here. Uh, some people will call this a petition. Okay, so you could use, I use entreaty. It's, it's a request. It's a polite request to God. Okay, but this is important because we want to know what are the requests, what are the promises. So we, want, we need to know what type of, of action is going on here. So, so David is asking something of God. And so we, we, he's asking something of God. And so the actor here is not, is not, David is not the actor. He's asking God to act. Does everyone understand that? David's not the actor. He's asking God to act. And the specific act is to be merciful, okay? And so the object, when we say object, we're saying who is the one receiving the action? Who is the action being done on? And so God, of course, is the actor. He's going to have mercy. And then the object would be on David. Object, person. So right there we have this, Right off the bat in the prayer, we have this entreaty, okay? This is the type of sentence. This is the type of sentence. It's a sometimes, sometimes this is the same, and sometimes it's different. Sometimes there's a more comprehensive idea that's happening there, okay? But for this sentence, we could say it's an entreaty. He's asking something from God, okay? Now, uh, when we're looking at when we're looking at this here, this is according to your steadfast love. Okay, that's a prepositional phrase, Kui Mac, for those. Um, um, but this is this is qualifying the action. Okay, so we we highlight it in a purple so that we know that it's it's there is some type of relationship here. Okay. It's qualifying the action, okay? And so when, I, when I'm looking at the type, this is signifying of accordance. Or we could say uh, agreement. Looking at the sense, you could also say, you could talk about a, a, a reason. I, I would I would allow that. Um, so what what's happening here is David is David is not just asking for mercy. He's asking for mercy on the basis of something or or in accordance with something. What is that agreement that he's asking God to have mercy in? What is that? Well, that's the that's the steadfast love. Okay, steadfast love. In in. In the Hebrew, that's just one word. Okay, so steadfast love is one word. Okay, everyone tracking with me there? Now, what's very interesting here is that this word has incredibly deep meaning. So what I want to do is, I want to investigate this word. Okay, I want to investigate this word, this word steadfast love. What, what are some other translations? Let's first write out some other translations. Does anyone have a different translation? Let's, let's write some of this out. Does anyone have a different translation? NIV. Anyone has NIV? I can look it up if no one has it. Uh, for American Standard Version, steadfast love is written as loving kindness. Great. I was looking for that. Loving kindness. Loving kindness for American Standard Version. Great. For Christian Standard Bible, it's faithful love. Great. I mean, that's, even, that's really good. Faithful love. Yeah. For King James, it's also loving kindness. So this is the same as King James. Any, anything else? What, what's your translation? NIV or what is it? NLT. NLT. Unfailing. Unfailing love for NLT and also for NIV, unfailing love. Okay, so loving kindness is good, but it seems to be generic. Um, 
faithful love really really is significant okay because it seems to be describing a commitment to something diva there's a commitment to something it's not just love there's a there's a faithful love it's committed to something does everyone see does that does everyone see the slight nuance he, here steadfast love is like uh, steadfast love is close to unfailing diva okay i am going to go to i have my notes here i just want to uh okay so can everyone see? All right, so I'm giving you the secret right now. <laughs> I'm giving you the secret. Okay, uh, there's four passages. I want each person to work, look up a different passage. So, Kuya Mac, you have Exodus 34, 6. Uh, read verses 5 to 7, okay? Um, uh, uh, Kuya Boboy, you have Numbers 14, 18. Kuya Danny, you have Deuteronomy 7, 9. Uh, Kuya Henry, you have Second Samuel seven fifteen. Okay, everyone has that. You have that in your mind. You have it written down. So I'm going to come back to my other passage here now. So what's mine? What's mine? What's mine? Okay, hold on. So you have uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, you have Numbers fourteen eighteen. What's that? Deuteronomy. No, no. You have Numbers. Numbers. Have numbers. Numbers. Numbers fourteen eighteen. Everyone has their passage. Okay, uh, Matt, look for it. Matt, can you begin with yours? You, you, just give me your reference, and then you can go ahead and read it. What's your reference, Matt? Uh, it's an AV. Okay, Exodus what? Uh, Exodus 34, verse 6. Go ahead and read it. Okay, uh, Exodus 34, verse 6, And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Can you keep reading, maybe verse 7 and 8, continue to read. Maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents of the third, out to the third and fourth generation. Verse 8, Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshipped. Okay, okay, so... Um, the, the, the key phrase there is uh, slow to anger, merciful, gracious God, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Okay, this is, this is uh, the context here. Let's just do six. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change here. This is a foundational passage everyone should know. This is, this is after the, this is, the Lord has just confirmed the covenant and they have broken it. And then Moses is begging and interceding for the people, and he begs the Lord to reveal himself to him. And so the Lord comes down, and he reveals his name, and he's describing who he is, who he is as God, okay? Um, and so this is, this, is, uh, this is referring to, this is, a, this is a covenant context, because he has just given the covenant, okay? So, so what we see here is that this, this context is, uh, is uh, in, a, in a covenant context. And the specific, the specific is the Davidic, uh, I don't know why I'm saying Davidic, the, the Mosaic, the, the Mosaic law. Everyone understands what I say when I say Mosaic law? So uh, God is the one who is slow to anger, abounding in chesed, that's the word, or, or, or loving kindness, or steadfast love and faithfulness, okay? So, so, so these are seen in connection to the covenant, okay? This is the covenant context, okay? So it's, it's, just, it's not just a generic love. It's a love in relationship to a covenant, okay? You're going to see this uh, more clearly uh, clearer as we as we continue on the, the next passage of scripture is who has the next passage of scripture um uh numbers 14 18 can you read that uh queer boy can you hear me yes okay the lord is long suffering and of great mercy forgiving iniquity and transgression and by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Okay, so again, this is almost a parallel context to what has happened. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really parallel. So again, you have 
in the context of the of the Mosaic Covenant, this description of who the Lord is, and and He is one who abounds in this steadfast, this this faithful covenantal love. Okay, so again, this is a this is again uh, the covenant context. Okay, all right. Um, if you're, it doesn't make sense yet. I hope it'll make sense by the end. Okay, let let's go now to. Uh, Deuteronomy 7.9. Who has Deuteronomy 7.9? I think it's Danny. Deuteronomy 7.9. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is the God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his command. He is the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love. And so what, again, what you're seeing here is in these covenantal contexts, how do you describe the love, the loving kindness, this goodwill, this faithfulness? This word chesed, it's the Hebrew word, is always connected with the covenant. So it's, it's describing, so God keeps his covenant, and, and, and perhaps you could talk about the means or what keeps him faithful to the covenant is this, this faithful love. Okay, so this is the outworking of his faithfulness to the covenant. Is, I, is that making sense with what I'm saying here? So again, this is again given in, in, the, in the covenant context mosaic. Well, what, I, what I'm trying to get at here is this is a covenant uh, love. Yeah, terminology is what I'm trying to get at. And you're right, covenant, covenantal love. Okay? Everyone's tracking with me. Everyone's tracking with me, okay? All right, last one. Kuya Henry, you're on, you're, you're on, you're ready to do the home run. Go ahead and read that to me. Okay. Uh, ESV translation, Second uh, Samuel chapter 7, verse 15. Uh, verse 15. But my steadfast love will not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. No, but my steadfast love will not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Okay. Now, Henry, go to Second Samuel 7 verse 1. If, is there a title... For this context, what is this context? We've had the Mosaic Law in the first in the first uh, three examples. What is the context in which this is stated? Does it give you Second a Samuel seven six, seven one one yeah seven verse one? There should be a title somewhere in there. What's the context? Maybe you can just look ahead and you can uh, just above and you can see the context. What, what is the context? Is there a covenant? What's the covenant if there is a covenant? Uh, it's uh, Nathan approves the purpose of David to build God and how a house. God appoints his successor to build it, David's prayer and thanksgiving. Second Samuel 7 1. Huh? Second Samuel 7 1. Uh, well, it's, it's the full chapter, it's the whole chapter. So it's 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 uh it's what you've described is the content of um, doesn't it also talk about um, yeah I will build your house your kingdom will be made sure forever uh, I will be to him a father you will be to me he will be, shall be to me a son um, I will raise up offspring after you this is the Davidic covenant uh, yes yes uh, this is uh, uh, covenant of God to the house of David. Yes, Tama, Tama. So it's God's covenant to David. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. So there are so many more examples. There's examples in, in with Abraham. There's examples with with Jacob. There's examples all in the Psalms with the, the Messiah. But what I'm trying to get at is this is a covenant. Uh -huh. terminology. Okay. When God made a covenant to a person. Irregardless, whatever that person has done, yeah. it's still God is true to his covenant. Yes, yes. Now, now here's the click, click key because the Bible you read, I, he took his, his covenant.
faithfulness from Saul, but he won't do it to David, okay? With, when you talk about covenants in Scripture, some covenants are conditional and some are unconditional, okay? So the Mosaic covenant was conditional. Do this and live, okay? Uh, that's why you saw in Deuteronomy 7. Let's, uh, you don't have to go back there. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Watch this. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Um, uh, know therefore the Lord your God is, is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love. So he keeps steadfast love what? Watch. To, to everyone? To the world? To, to, to those regardless? No. To those who love him and keep his commandments. To a thousand generations. Okay. So, so it, some covenants are conditional. Adamic covenant, conditional. Do this and live. Adam failed, okay? Um, unconditional. Abrahamic covenant, unconditional. Davidic covenant, unconditional. New covenant in Christ, unconditional, okay? So God will always be faithful to the stipulations and the agreement that he makes with mankind, okay? Now, now that you see this big word, Look back at the passage. Have mercy to me, O God, according to your covenant love. Now, this is not a demand. This is a, 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 ple a pleading. This is a pleading. This is not, this is not a demand. But he's, he's basing his request for mercy according to God's promises. To God's, we could say here, covenant covenantal love have mercy on me so so an application here an application here when we sin we can ask god to have mercy according to your covenantal love in christ the reason why we can come boldly before the throne of grace is because of the covenantal love in christ so when we commit sin we are humble yet we are asking for forgiveness because of, of God's covenantal faithfulness in Christ. So for us, we're not afraid that he's going to depart like Saul because we have everything in Christ, okay? And so we can even look So we're close on verse one. I was hoping to get verse three. We, we, it's already nine o'clock. We'll finish in We'll finish first one. Okay, but we did the background. The background was big. The background was big because we, we spent time and, and we really we went deep. But what I want us to see here, what I want us to see here is that when we sin, in one sense, we have boldness. In one sense, we can call upon God's promises. In another sense, we should never be arrogant. God, you have to forgive me. Not in a prideful, demanding sense. But here, you see the urgency. And, and the lack of demands, the lack of, of excuses, be merciful to me, okay? I will draw attention here. This is, I will end on this note. This is the courtroom setting. <laughs> Duba, who shows mercy? The judge. The judge shows mercy. Okay, so this is, this is the sinner the convict begging for mercy to a judge on the basis of the judge's covenantal love for him. Let's just come back here to finish up here. Um, I just want to review. Let's change this assignment. I want three observations and three questions that are different than what we discussed from uh, Psalm 51, 1 to 5, okay? So that's the assignment for next week. Three observations and three questions for Psalm 51, 1 to 5, okay? And, and it should go a lot, it should go much quicker now, now that we have the context set up, okay? So I want to be finished this in maybe two or three weeks. It should go quicker. But I, I do also want, if possible, if you could read uh, first, uh, Second Samuel chapter 11 and 12, read the context, meditate upon the context a little bit, okay? Really think about that, all right? So those would be the two assignments, and, and I'll post this once we get off here. Let's focus on doing that for next week. So I want three new observations and three questions. Sigurado, you will have. So I want new questions. I want you to, I want you to 
grab the text until it gives you a question or it gives you an observation, okay? Um, I posted a, a, a handout of what observations are, how to look for them, also a how to, how to ask a good question, okay? So it doesn't have to be profound. It can just be an observation that we have not yet made in the text and look at the, look at the handout. Um, someone had a question. So what about those who already asked? It will not be included. New, I want new, Bago, Bago. Okay, new, okay. So I want us to go, I want us to go deep, okay? And I, I will open this up, I will open this up, okay? Uh, uh, you could do three observations and questions in Psalm 51, one to five, or 2 Samuel 11 and 12, okay? If you cannot find, if you think all the observations are discovered in Psalm 51, one to, one to three, uh, one to five, you can do also in 2 Samuel 11 and 12. Okay, so those are your options, all right? So I want to be, I want to be, um, so, but I, I want us to, I want us to have some things to discuss. I want us to have some things to discuss. And, and I think that you'll really, you, you will really, my purpose here is for us, of course, to implement this prayer in our own prayer life. But a secondary purpose, so the primary purpose is that we are, we're praying like this when we, when we sin again. We're, there are times where we, where we commit sin and it comes to our minds, wow, I really sinned there. And I want us to pray a prayer like this. No excuses. Be very specific. And we'll talk about that next time. But the other, the other reason, too, is that I really want us to see what true repentance, true, true contrition, true... Uh, true confession looks like okay david is the example david is the example okay any other questions or comments i'll open the floor it's it's uh 905 908 any comments or questions and if not we can close in prayer any questions or comments yeah. I'll open. one last one last time one last time Tim. <laughs> yeah i asked that question because although uh it says there that after Nathan confronted David and David realized that you are that man, he immediately said, I have sinned. But it doesn't say that the context of Psalm 51 was immediately written after that meeting with, with Nathan. So it could, ha it could have been a few days after when David was probably uh, recollecting what happened to his son because his son really died after that. Yeah, yeah. So, Remember? Yeah, yeah. It could be it could be that it could be that the prayer happened when his son died because he realized, oh my goodness, the, yeah. the, the words of Nathan now came true. So probably that that could be the reason why he wrote Psalm 51, which is no, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why that's, that's that's what I'm thinking because there's yeah, yeah. there's no specific timetable. Yeah. The writing of Psalm 51 after after Nathan, although he said, Okay, I sinned against God right after it, but it does not say. He immediately wrote Psalm 51. No, and, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. I understand. So, 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 competent. Let's let's think of. Let, don't misunderstand. What I what I'm saying is, let's think and contemplate the questions and the observations. What, what we, those questions are. What I'm saying is, we're going to add more questions, more observations, and we and we do need to to study to discover those answers. And so, what you're saying. It's a good question. I, I, I like the question, and let, let's let's think about that. Um, and we can, one, as we work through, um, for sure, Sigurado, we could we could we could say, okay, maybe most likely it was after everything died, and he can now contemplate back on what had happened, or it could have been in the moment while he's mourning, while he's weeping, while he's pleading for the life of the baby. He's writing down what the words that he was pleading. He bought, Perhaps this is the context that the baby is dying while he's thinking. And it, so anyway, so let's, let's think about that question. I think it's a great question. Let's think about that. And the rest of the questions, what I'll do is I'll post the observations and questions that were already made and let's make new ones. And again, let's, let's start looking for answers and let's start really getting deep into the text. Okay. So what I'm trying to emphasize now is let's start going deep. And then let's also, maybe let's, next week we can discuss some of the answers. If you think you have an answer to one of the questions, let, let's discuss that, okay? So, um, any other comments or questions? I think we're good. I think, I think it's good. I think this is a good, uh, a good um, beginning. 
What I might also do is if I have time, uh, Henry, go ahead. I think it's a good, uh, a good question by Boboy. And maybe we can trace that from Second Samuel from chapter 12 onward. Yes, yes. Let, let maybe along, we can, knew, we can determine the timeline of Psalm 51. Let's do that. Yeah, Siggy. Let's and it has also connection to, to Psalm 32. Siggy. Okay, great. Awesome. So let's, 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 start, let's start looking for that answer. For, yeah. for the boy's it's question. from Psalm 2, Psalm chapter 12 onward. Siggy. You can find the timeline of Psalm 51. Good. Okay. We're, we're, getting, we're getting somewhere. So let's, let, us, let, us, let us depart here and let's investigate this week. And then we can discuss. So I'm excited. If, if I have time, I'll also look for some uh, journal articles that maybe will, will I don't know, but I, can, I also have a resource. I can search to see if someone has written an article. Sometimes there's an article and they've done the research for us. So I'll try to, if I can find articles, I'll post some articles for you, for you to read if you want. Um, and let's, let's start to, to, to seek to answer these questions. What I'll do is, I'll repost the assignments, the assignment on the on the group page. Um, well, boy, do you have access to the group page or no? Yes, no messenger. Oh, boy, boy, you're muted. We have to. I have to figure out. I'll email you. I will email you the document. I will email you the document. Yeah, I I am not using Facebook. I am not using Messenger. Okay. Uh, I'm just using my email and Viber. I will. Of course, I will. With this I will re-email you this information. And if we, I post something, I'll just email it to you separately, okay? If I post something. Although I saw what you sent me about your, I don't know what is that, but I have not really looked into it. What's that? What you was... just, yeah, yeah. It's about Converge as you look or something like that. I don't know. There's a link, there's a link. I have not uh, gone to that link. Was it, did it say Zoom? Did it say Zoom? Yeah, something like Zoom, oh. yeah. So the, the, link, the link is for this meeting. But uh, what I'm saying is whatever I post, I'll email you separately since you're not using yeah. it. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. All right. okay. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. And Kuya uh, Boboy, um, since you have returned from the dead and you are back stronger than ever, asking really good questions. And um, okay. Really, I'm really glad that you're here. But if you can close in prayer. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for using this time, this occasion to study Psalm 51. It's really amazing how these words can be put together and realize how sinful we are, the sins we have committed, and uh, most of the times we do not really immediately uh, acknowledge the sin because we thought uh, it's not a big deal, it's not a big deal for us, but uh, now we realize no sin is not a big deal to you, O God, and we are sorry and we ask for your forgiveness. And just like David, your mercy is uh, what we need. And uh, on the basis of your, of your kind of love, we ask for your mercy for all of us, especially for my own sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we will see you next week. God bless everyone. And